So now that we've got this surface that's mapped onto the facade, um, you'll notice that all the controls will still update. So we can change the height, change the number of subdivisions. And that with the slider that controls the surface boxes, we can, when we bring it down to zero, everything flattens out into the typical panels. And then as we turn it up, it starts to take on a more three dimensional look. So, another thing to point out is that. Um, we can alter, we can change, go back and switch out this surface. So let's try another one. Um, do a similar technique where we'll take a box and let's do, let's make this a kind of like triangular piece. Let's see. What I'll do is I'll, I'll extrude that. this make that into a surface let's just try something like this so I'll join these two and then I'll bring that in as a parameter but this time, let's just call it geometry rather than surface. Since it's multiples, usually if you do geometry, it tends to work better. Uh, it doesn't need to be told if it's one or two surfaces. So here, I'll set one geometry. And then let's feed that in instead of, instead of the surface. So I'll just override that. Then again, we can increase or decrease the amount that it extends out. So this can start to explore certain kind of shading devices. If we turn the, um, the original subdivided surfaces back on, we've got this sitting in front of the typical panel system. So that gives you a sense of um, the kinds of studies that you can start to do with this. Uh, and it's easy to just switch back and forth between different surfaces. So let's go back to um, our original. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hide the original curves. And just hide this Rhino geometry. Um, so another thing to point out is um, that you can also go and change the curve that actually um, that we started with. So this was the we had a, an original curve um, in Rhino that we were using. Let's just say, for example, that we wanted to go to something with a different kind of profile. If we were to set that as the curve that we start with, you'll notice that it maps it onto that, and then everything gets sort of carried over. Um, so we can switch that back. So these are the kinds of flexibilities that are built into this system. Um, and then lastly, uh, what I want everyone to do is after you find a kind of module that you're interested in mapping across this um, is to 
kind of go through a fine-tuning process and figuring out like what's a sort of ideal manifestation of this and to express that through an animation using the same technique that we used that we used last week so doing a series of screen captures making JPEGs and then bringing those sequential JPEGs into Acrobat um, and so here's an example uh, where it would start with the typical typical condition and then as you scroll through you can see that there's a kind of exploration of a sort of minimum and maximum of three-dimensionality there's uh, kind of going through of the sequence of panelization from you know few to many and then it kind of rests at a sort of ideal final condition so this could be the last slide should be the kind of design proposal and then everything between the first and last is a sort of study or fine-tuning of the facade. Um, so that's it.